our daily word again today, this Thursday, cold, chilly morning. Um, I'm always grateful, as always, that you could join with me today and spend your time with me and carve out time to be with me and offer greetings as you log in. So, um, to daily word today is number 842. As we continue this long journey together, as we try to just figure out together how to live life better as we do that um, through scripture. So I've chosen for today, there's going to be two, but the main one that I said is Philippians 2 uh, verse 4. And that's just that one verse that jumps out at us as we um, try to live together. And then um, I'm also going to share 1 Corinthians 12, 26, which kind, of, which kind of bookends and ties this together, if you will. And so these are important scriptures for us. So first from Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 4. Let each of you look not only to your own interest, but to the interest of others. So... I've been in the situation a couple of times, and, and even here, um, sometimes when we're downstairs for worship, um, or in funeral homes sometimes, or in other places where um, I think, you know, I'm loud enough, I don't need a microphone. I even had to resort to that a couple of times a couple of years ago at senior night at soccer. Um, the microphone had gotten wet, and it wouldn't work, and we were outside on the soccer field. And I was trying to introduce the seniors and so I went out halfway between the bleachers where the people were and the side where the parents were walking with their athletes. And I essentially used my big mouth to yell um, this senior night stuff. And someone said, you know, well, you know, you really don't need a microphone anyway. Um, maybe I didn't for my own purposes, but somebody else did. Someone didn't hear it all. Someone didn't get it. You know, someone missed the whole thing because the microphone didn't work or I was too Because of my ego, I said, I don't need a microphone. Whatever our abilities are, whatever we think we do the best, looking to our own interest, when we do that, sometimes, sometimes, we assume the abilities of others, we center on ourselves, dismiss others, and then because of that, they miss out on something that happens for us. It's, it's our task, it's our job, it's our call to nurture a covenant together with each other where everybody in the body of Christ, everybody in the setting that we're in, we move from a monologue where it's just my voice or your voice to saying we all need this important things in our lives. You know, Paul, when he writes this to the church in Philippi, um, he offers a counterpoint and a continuation to do unto others as you would have them do to you. That invites us to set aside our presumptions, our assumptions, our preferences, and even discomfort so that the needs of the many are met. First Corinthians twelve twenty six says, "If one member of the body of Christ suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it." When somebody's needs are dismissed, the entire body suffers. But when one member's needs are met, the whole body benefits from that. And I think we, we sometimes miss that in our culture. You know, we are such rugged individualists. It's said of us of German descent. You know, we are rugged individualists and we just go about doing our thing and we, we often say, look, I don't need a microphone. My voice carries no matter what. <clears throat> That's essentially saying, I can do it all by myself. I can pull myself up. When instead, what we are called to is this idea that yes we do need the microphone so that everyone can hear us and even more as first corinthians tells us we need to pass the microphone so that we can amplify the body's rejoicing 
And I think those are critical things for us as we live in community together. The way we do it in church, the way we do it in the grocery store, the shopping center, or a restaurant. We were at Pizza Hut last night, Wednesday night buffet. I don't know if someone called in or they just didn't schedule enough, but the entire place is buzzing with one server. And boy, she was ran ragged. But she did a great job. And when I went up to pay, she was breathing really hard and sweat rolling down her brow. And she said, was everything okay? And I said, you know, you did a great job. This is a tough task. This is a tough restaurant for one person. She said, you know, I really tried. And I appreciate you being kind and being patient with me. And I, and I gave her a good tip last night based on our bill. I gave her a really good tip. And I said, I just thanked her. Now, there's a reminder for us. In a busy, crowded place, we have the choice. We can look to our own interests. Am I getting enough? Is, am I getting enough attention? Or we can look to the interests of all those gathered and know that that one person did a good job and by, and by <clears throat> complimenting them, we build up the body of Christ. It's a simple example of, I think, how we're called to live. So that's our word for today. I hope it's a good word as we continue to share our lives together. As always, thanks for joining me and for being a part of this journey with me. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day. Know of God's love that surrounds you and know of my love for you.